yanda ni yajira magana nora gata guru yenda wala wujuna yenda yajili yajila welcome good friend to our magana home two waters you come a stranger you're now a friend you know 70 percent of our country up there is sea um, it's a very unique area it's like the junction of you know uh, atmospheric um, marine and geographic areas. It's just a real mixing point. Kathaguru is our Mulgana name for this beautiful paradise that we live in Shark Bay. We have strong cultural connections here. We recently gained determination in, on the 4th of December 2018, uh, which formally recognised us as the traditional custodians and owners of our country. Shark Bay Marine Park is uh, almost a million hectares of uh, the most pristine marine environment that you ever get to see. Uh, it also takes in Hamlin Pool Marine Nature Reserve. It's a, it's a truly unique part of, of Australia and the globe. Uh, so that area is, is designated as a marine nature reserve because it's, uh, it's conservation status for the stromatolites and the, the very unique environment that's developed there. And so it's an important place for research to really understand what's driven the climate change throughout history and important to, to provide information to scientists as, as we move into the future as well. Shark Bay is a really important area for fishing full stop. Commercial fishing has a long history and more recently, in, in recent decades, become a recreational fishing destination. It's one of Australia's premier recreational fishing destinations and around that you've got the tourism related aspect to it. So in terms of commercial fishing, the first fishery up there was actually the pearling, uh, which dates from the eight, late 1800s. And obviously there was a community there and they had to feed themselves and they turn to fishing. But Shark Bay as a whole as a commercial fishing area is probably our second most uh, important fishery in the state after Roxholm. So when you add prawns, scallops, crabs uh, and snapper together. So very important part of the area and that's obviously dependent on the natural values of the area, good management and the environmental aspects. So preserving the marine environment for healthy fisheries is very much uh, what the department's about and certainly the community well understands. Shark Bay is one of those truly exceptional places of which you find the biodiversity and the ecosystem and the species that are living in Shark Bay nowhere else on earth. And because of that special status, a special um, marine life uh, that is very famous around the world, Shark Bay has received a special recognition. It has received the UNESCO World Heritage Recognition already back in 1991. So the rangers themselves are an interesting group of committed young people who want to live on country in, in Shark Bay and they want to do something that looks after culture and looks after country. I learn every day a little bit more about the Mulgama language and Mulgama culture and to me it just enriches my research incredibly. For me, seagrasses represent one of the major, major primary producers in sandy bottoms around the country. And the really cool thing about seagrasses is we are one of the sites of biodiversity of seagrasses in West Australia. So it sits between the tropical and the temperate waters of West Australia. So it's the transition in all of the uh, predicted and also actual climate change that's happening right now. And Shark Bay was, is one of the worst examples of at what an extreme heat wave does to an ecosystem. If we don't act now, I think Shark Bay is probably in for a tough time in the future. Um, all the projections show that marine heat waves are going to become more frequent and more intense in the future. And we've seen in 2011 that there was really quite a stark impact to Shark Bay that impacted its um, environmental values, its social values and its economic values as well that's centred around the dieback of the temperate seagrasses we've got growing there. We know that the major seagrasses in Shark Bay do not like warmer temperatures, and so if we do nothing to protect them, these warm temperatures that are going to keep coming through in the form of marine heat waves are really going to decimate that marine environment and threaten the world heritage values of the bay. So one of the things we found when we were speaking to Mulgana is that they see huge numbers of researchers, both from the state and internationally, coming in and working um, in, the sea, in their sea country in Gadaguru. So they were very interested to know what research had been done. 
So we had a large workshop and it was really to return some of the knowledge. So we'd done a large plan, we'd done the um, synthesis of the papers that had been published and there was over 900. And we gave back to Malgana um, a list of all of these and a short um, synthesis of what they're about. I think we've got a really unique opportunity in Shark Bay to be not only national leaders but also international leaders in terms of how um, we can marry science and commercial enterprises well. So I guess the, the, the buzzword has always been sustainable development. We had that op opportunity to do things right in Shark Bay, to be really cognizant of the fact that we are in a very pristine but incredibly fragile marine and terrestrial environment and there's a huge need to protect that. On the same token, obviously being a tourism operator, we want to showcase that to not only Australians but people globally. Um, and we've got an opportunity here to do it well, to do it right, provided it's done uh, with the ecosystem in mind. I'd like to see, moving into our future, that our world heritage values, our outstanding universal values, are available for our children to use and benefit from. Not just from the perspective of conservation without use, but because our world heritage values, the fact that we've got these beautiful seagrass meadows, they provide for a really dynamic industry. Um, we've got great fisheries here. We have fabulous tourism here. We have so much interchange of data and what, what we really want to move on to is intercultural connection. You know, uh, not just, you know, um, non-Indigenous connections to us, with us. Um, but intercultural to get us back together again, yeah.